Let's go ahead and try some of these. These are real FRQs from previous AP exams. So this is the type of thing. This is the type of thing you can expect to see uh, on the AP exam in May about differential equations. All right. So the first one here, first off, they give you the differential equation. Right. This is the way it looks on AP Classroom. I would be shocked on the AP exam if it did not look like this, which is how we've been seeing it on uh, the questions we have been doing. Right. I mean, it should, shouldn't should not be an issue. Hopefully you be able to handle that. But they usually put the dy over dx, not like the fraction like horizontally. OK. Now, this first one says, here are nine dots, all right, nine points. And they want you to sketch the different slopes at each of those points. So this is one of those things where it's like, this should be automatic, you're getting these points, okay? If you take your time and plug in the points, right? Obviously, I chose this one for a reason, because it has some trig, all right? So yes, you do need to know some trig to get this correct, all right? So I'm just gonna make a table, probably gonna need more than one of these T-charts, just because there are nine of them. But take your time when you're doing this because I don't want you to miss this one. This is the one that, you know, we need to get this part right. Okay, it does not matter the order in which you do it. So I would think most people are gonna choose zero, zero to start. You don't have to though, right? That, you can, no, David, what would you have chosen? You would start one of the corners, really. You, am I the only one that would start at the origin? No. Oh, you would start, you would go negative one, positive one? Yeah. All right, my bad. All right, my brain is different. Good. You could? Well, there might be a, you're going to see there is a pattern for something you're talking about. Okay. All right, let's try negative one, positive one. I think the hardest part here, I think the hardest part here, if you kind of put the trick to the side, is that the first thing that you see in the differential equation is y. All right, so just please, please, please make sure when you're doing this in May, you're like, okay, which one comes first? What is my y? All right, and if you want to do, you know, like some work over here, I'm gonna plug in one minus one squared times the cosine of pi times negative one. That's kind of, I think, the most common mistake I see with these is students just don't plug them into the right letters, especially if Y is first, right? You guys practice this already, right? We did this with the, the soul field activity besides the cheating happening going on, right? Uh, super fun there. But ultimately, the Delta math links you've been doing, you've been practicing this, hopefully, for the last week or so. Okay. Now, what happens, what happens here when you do You get zero. So do I even care what happens with this cosine of whatever? Right? No, because zero times that is going to be zero. Remember, I'm going to use a different color. You're probably not going to use a different color. But when you zoom in, if the slope is zero, make sure that your line on your point has a horizontal line there. That's the slope of zero. I guess technically that was close. Let's try again. There we go. Okay. Everybody all right with the first one? All right, so you're saying, Georgie, you would go zero, one then? All right, so zero, one, here we go. So again, plugging in one. Now, what do you notice happens? You start to notice, I think this is kind of what Alan was starting to talk about, is that you might notice a pattern. If the Y value is one, this will always become zero. And so it doesn't matter what happens with the cosine uh, when you plug in the X. So this will always be zero. So you might be able to skip one because even though I haven't plugged it in, what's gonna happen at the point one comma one? It's also going to have the same slope. If you don't see that, is it a big deal to plug that one in? No, right? Take the extra 10 seconds and plug it in. Can we just focus? I mean, this is the stuff that we should be getting, okay? All right. So we're moving to negative one, zero. So now I'm plugging in zero minus one squared, right? It's y minus one squared times the cosine of pi times negative one. So this one is a little different because does this become zero at the beginning here? No, right? Zero minus one is negative one. Negative one squared is 
positive one. And then now we need to do a little trig here. This is the cosine of negative pi. So if I just quickly draw negative pi, do you know where negative pi is? It is on the left. This is actually the same as positive pi, right? Positive pi, you're moving counterclockwise. Negative pi, you're moving clockwise. But you end up at the same spot, okay? So the ordered pair here is negative one, zero. We're looking for the cosine. Which one is cosine? The x. So this is negative one. Remember, that's not negative one because the argument was negative. That's because it's the ordered pair at that uh, terminal side. So what's one times negative one? Negative one. So I'm gonna do a slope of negative one there. Try to make it point at this point here. Okay, do your best on that. Everybody good? Okay. Question? No. Okay, that was a thumbs up, awesome. All right, let me go to the next one. Next one is the one I would have done first, zero, zero. So 0 minus 1 squared times the cosine of pi times 0. Now, we just did the 0 minus 1 squared. We got 1. Now, this is going to be the cosine of 0. So going back to my sketch here, 0 radians is right here. What's that ordered pair? 1, 0. What is the cosine of 0? Is 1. Okay, if you want another way to memorize it, I always memorize in high school. So... The sine of zero is zero, right? So the cosine of zero is one. So that slope is positive one. That's how I memorized in high school, yes. Really, I just did it to annoy my brothers. Okay, let's go to the last one on that row, one, zero. It is a lot of work, but man, it's gonna be nice if you get them all right. Oh, only a couple. Same thing with the y, right? Zero minus one squared. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Is positive. And now I have the cosine of pi. So I mentioned this already. I mentioned this already, but pi and negative pi end up in the same terminal side. So we went this direction for negative pi. For positive pi, you go counterclockwise, but you end up at the same spot, all right, for halfway around the circle. So what is the cosine of pi is negative one. So that's going to have the same slope as the point we did two points ago. Okay. How are we doing so far? Two thirds of the way down. Okay. Sounds like a PP personal problem. Do your best. How's it negative one? So this right here is positive one. That's been the same every time for the uh, y value of zero. And then we have the cosine of pi. So pi, even though I wrote negative pi here, it's actually also pi. Because if you move counterclockwise for a positive direction, you stop there for pi as well. So the cosine of pi is negative one. Okay. All right, let's go to the last row. Negative one, negative one. So I have negative one minus one squared times the cosine of pi times negative one. If you're showing your work here, sorry, Alan, I know you ran out of room, but if you're showing your work, have we already done the cosine of negative pi? We did that earlier, right? The cosine of negative pi, I said, was negative one. So you can copy that down. Now, what happens here with this one? That's negative two squared, which is positive four. So that's a slope of negative four. So you need to make that one steeper than the other negatives you've done. So I was thinking something like this. Two more to go. Go ahead, Hannah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, they just wanted to see, first off, is it negative? And then if you have one that's negative four and negative eight, the negative eight should be steeper than your negative four. And what if you like it by they're, they're told, I don't know, because I haven't done it yet, but I assume they're told if it's steeper than negative one, check for that. If, if one is steeper than the other, make sure that those relationships all match. I don't think they're gonna like take out the protractor and start <laughs> making sure that it is, okay. Okay, zero, negative one. 
So negative one minus one squared equals the cosine of pi times zero. We've already done the cosine of zero, right? We did the cosine of zero here, which was positive one. And we actually just did negative one minus one and then squaring it and got four. So this is gonna be a, a steep slope again, but now it's positive. So do positive four. And last but not least, we have one comma negative one. Can I wait until I finish the, oop, the whole problem? Would I say one negative one? All right. So negative one minus one. I want to put equals there. Sorry, guys. Cosine of one. All right. So that's going to be four again. And what's the cosine of pi? Negative one. So this slope is another steep negative slope. And that's it. So I think the hardest part of here is the persistence to do all of them. Because uh, sometimes I've seen some where they ask you to do 12. Wait, what? 12? So we did nine points. So sometimes they ask you to do more than that. Are you going to give us one last 12? Sure, why not? All right, here we go. Letter B. It says there is a horizontal line with the equation y equals c that satisfies this differential equation. Find the value of C. So hone in on your slope field, right? Is there a line Y equals some number that would satisfy these slopes? Does anyone see it? Like I want to draw a line that's going to match with these slope fields, like the, the slopes in this field. Now you tell me a number. There's only three options. What are the three options? What? You ready? Y equals negative one y equals zero or y equals one which of those matches all three of those points one. the last one right y equals one like if you were to draw it right you would match those three slopes so this question is asking if you look at that slope field is there a value c that would basically if you drew it it would match your slopes in your slope field and the answer is y equals one all right because it is that easy, although I, none of us really got it, right? Because the horizontal line, when C equals one, matches our slopes. You have to get this yeah. Is that, I mean, I, I think I wrote like 10 words, is that okay? No, I mean, David, you write a lot of words, right? So this should not be an issue. It's not stats. True, yes. All right. Questions so far? I think this next part is the hardest part. All right, this is what you've been prepping. If you think back to earlier this week or last week, this is where you've got to essentially separate the differential equation. We're going to have antiderivatives. We're going to find the general solution to then find a particular solution. Go ahead, Jordy. Part B. Well, if you drew the only horizontal lines, right? Y equals the number is a horizontal line. If I drew Y equals zero, no, that doesn't work because these slopes, none of them are zero. And same with Y equals negative one. That doesn't match my slopes. Exactly, because that's what it says, Y equals C. Would there be cases where the it gives us Oh, yeah, the next one. The next one you're going to see. Yeah. Like more complicated sketching, I think, is what I would say. I think it's probably less, they don't do as much of this. They say, okay, now sketch a solution. That's where I'm trying the next one. Okay. That's a little tougher. All right, let's do our separation of variables. We have that, see the y minus, sorry, it's a little slow today. Do you see the y minus 1 squared right here? I want to move that where? To the left. So I'm going to write dy over y minus 1 squared equals, this is where I moved the dx to the other side. So I believe it's cosine 
of pi times x dx. Let me just confirm. Yes, okay. All right, so then I'm going to integrate both sides. Wait for it, there you go. So I'm going to write the integral. And if you wanted to, you could literally put the integral symbol in front of them, right? Because that's ultimately what you're doing, right? Now, I actually, wait for it. There it is, got it. So the first thing I do is you see the y minus 1 that's raised to the second power in the bottom? I rewrite that as y minus 1 to the negative second power. Now, when I see that negative 2, the way I think about doing the antiderivative is I add 1 to the power. So what happens when I add 1 to negative 2? You get negative 1. So right now, if I were to stop and take the derivative, if this is right, I should get that. So let's see. What do I do with the power? Move it to the front, right? There's nothing to multiply, so it stays negative 1. And then do this, copy it, subtract one from that. That's good. What's the derivative? Right, this is chain rule. What's the derivative of y? One, so I'm good there. So the only issue is that if I left it right now, I'd have a negative in front, which I don't have in this uh, value here. So I need to put a negative there, and that's good. I'm nowhere close to being it, but yes, that is the antiderivative of the left side. Equals. How do we go backwards from cosine? You write sine. Okay, now right now, if I were to stop and take the derivative, what is the derivative of sine? Cosine, so I'm good there. But remember the chain rule is always in effect. Is this just x in here? No, so what is the derivative of pi x? Pi, so I'd have to have a pi here. Do I have a pi in front? No, so to account for that, I need to not just put pi, I need to do the reciprocal of pi, which is 1 over pi. Now, this is the right-hand side with x, so what does this one get after? Plus c. We definitely have done this before. The derivative of sine is positive cosine. If this had been sine and had to write cosine, then I would need a negative because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Good question. Okay, I like to solve for y first. I like to get the general solution first before I plug in the initial condition. So I am going to keep going to solve for this y, to get the y by itself. All right, first thing I notice is that I have the negative 1 over. I'm going to put this back in the denominator. No. Thank you for asking that. Okay. Now, if you look at this first, all right, when I look at this, I see that I have this 1 over pi. If I want to move this 1 over pi to the other side, what should I do to both sides? Times by pi. So when I multiply this whole side by pi, this is going to go away. And where's my pi going to end up? In the numerator on the other side. It is, yes. All right, now here I think is one of the harder parts. I need to move this y minus 1 out of the denominator. So I'm going to move this to the right-hand side where it would multiply by all the stuff that's currently there. But am I going to leave that there on the right side? No, I'm going to move this to the left side. When I move that to the left side, it goes in the denominator. So I'm going to write negative pi, or the opposite of pi, over the sine of pi x plus c. Yes, because it's in the numerator on the right-hand side, when I move it to the other side, it has to move to the denominator, right? Because you're dividing by this whole thing to move it over. I'm trying to get y by itself. I'm trying to find the general solution, and then I'm going to plug in to find a particular one. Somebody answer it. I'm not, I'm not capable of that. All right, so y equals the last step. How do I move the minus 1 over? Just add 1. So here is the answer for the general solution. 
Now, this is great. You've gotten to the general solution, but is this the actual answer you're looking for? No. Now I need to plug in the initial condition. So they give you an X, they give you a Y, you could solve for C. All right, so let's plug in. What is the initial condition? One, zero. So Y is zero when X is one. Bye, Eduardo. Notice how the X went away, right? Because one times pi is just pi. Is that okay? Well, because when I plug in this point, this is the X. So when you plug in that, that's one times pi, which is pi. We're good. I know I'm going. I'm going like in a, like a little circle. All right. Now, at this point, I'm going to move the one over where it becomes a negative one. You know what? Actually, let's do this. We know the sine of pi. What is the sine of pi? It's zero. So this is really just negative one equals the opposite of pi over C. If you do some rearranging algebraically, where can I move this C? To the left side where it comes into the numerator. If I move this negative one to the other side with division, it's the opposite of pi over negative one, that's a negative over a negative. So C equals, say it one more time. How much is the plus one? This plus one? I moved it to the other side to get a negative one. So what is C? It's pi. Almost. Almost. Well, because remember, this right here is the general solution. So I'm about to copy that. And what am I replacing C with? With pi. And then I'm done. You don't think these are similar? You think this is easier? It is easier. Okay. That's good, right? I mean, I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to uh, boost your confidence here by saying, like, this is easy. Like, this is not easy. If you get this right, that's really impressive. Okay, I am going to stop recording, but then I'm going to start another one because it was pretty long. And I know that people will stop watching.